Uh, so I'm going to do the first half of the presentation and then hand over to Arif uh, for the, the second half. <clears throat> so the paper is principally, and the presentation is principally concerned with an old question about uh, the, the, the composition of employment and its effect uh, on inequality. Um, and so we were sort of thinking through the interest here is sort of drawing inequality in employment and these kind of questions back into debates about processes of, of economic development and structural change. Somewhat, so I think very much in keeping with the spirit of Andrea's presentation as well. So in terms of a kind of background, in terms of thinking about economic development and some of the context, um, make three points as a point of uh, departure uh, or an introduction. First of all, I think it's, uh, well, we'll see if this is, if this is uh, contentious or not. The, the, the traditional pathway to economic development, meaning industrialization, expansion of manufacturing shares, is, uh, I would say, becoming harder for developing countries. Harder, harder to start on and harder to sustain. And the argument of uh, uh, Kaplinsky, Felipe, and others is that as more and more countries enter similar, uh, similar export markets, uh, the, the, the amount of manufacturing and jobs is getting spread uh, across those countries. Um, secondly, uh, and uh, whether this is, is good or bad is an open question. I think uh, you can have good and bad deindustrialization. Uh, many middle-income countries are actually deindustrializing. I mean, a, pro a more accurate term might be tertiarization, I think, than deindustrialization. Again, there's some contestation. There's a deindustrialization or a, a peaking, perhaps not a decline yet, of, of manufacturing employment shares, uh, whilst uh, whether value added is, uh, is uh, as peaked or not depends on the countries you're looking at. Um, and so for, for many of, of, the, of the world's developing countries, the issue around uh, economic development is actually one of sort of growing service sector and how that provides employment and what it means for inequality. So these are the kind of the, the kind of contemporary or st I guess this kind of uh, uh, stylized facts of a kind in terms of economic development. And we thought we'd take a look at what those mean for inequality and obviously indirectly there are consequences for poverty in terms of employment creation. Of course, Kuznets is the, is the kind of backdrop to all of these kind of things. And so um, uh, we come to that in, in due course. Uh, I'll skip that one. Um, in terms of deindustrialization, we focus on deindustrialization principally because we, we look at the case study of Indonesia, which Arif will, will introduce in a moment. So they're very much written on deindustrialization, but it's, it's largely with reference to the rich countries or advanced countries. Uh, not only historically, some very seminal papers, but more recently too. The relevance of that literature to developing countries, I think, is, is more of an open question, given that uh, deindustrialization is happening at an earlier stage uh, for many countries than historically was the case for other countries. There's a small set of uh, uh, country case studies we've found so far, uh, five or six countries, and a, a relatively small but growing set of cross-country papers on these kind of issues around deindustrialization. Now, I'm going to talk about one of the papers, more recent papers. Uh, I'm going to talk about this because I think it's a very interesting paper. I'm also going to talk about it because it's the next director of WIDER. Um, uh, Kunal is at the back, smiling very modestly. <coughs> um, so uh, essentially, uh, Beaumont said, take the, uh, the Groningen 10-sector database and look at the relationship between uh, structural transformation and inequality using the standardized World Income Inequality Database that's forthcoming, not yet uh, publicly available. Um, what they find is the, the movement of uh, employment towards manufacturing is unambiguously, unambiguously associated with uh, decreasing income inequality. And the movement to workers into services has no discernible impact on inequality. But in certain types of countries, what they refer to as structurally developing countries, that is countries where manufacturing is greater than agriculture in terms of sector shares and employment, you get an increase in inequality. And in, in structurally uh, developed countries, you get a, a decrease in inequality. So I think that's kind of interesting as the kind of global picture based on about 30 countries. And it brings us back to a question, I think, in terms of theory about, about what Kuznets actually said. I know uh, Ravi Kamba wrote a very interesting paper that, that brought to the fore something that had been on my mind for quite some time, that that the, the Kuznets is, is, is largely reduced to the curve, but actually this seminal paper was much more interesting, thoughtful. It's absolutely stuffed with caveats and, and nuance. And uh, I think it raises an interesting question about the, 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 uh, the, the forces that are impacting on inequality as countries go through structural change. So uh, principally, I think of interest is the fact that uh, 
Kuznets, using a, a dual economy model, talked about uh, inequality rising in the early stages as growth tends to benefit those with capital and education. As move, move, people move out of the rural sector, real wages rise and inequality falls. Uh, that means that the, essentially inequality is, a, a, is a, a, a decomposable between three components, inequality uh, in each sector, the mean income of each sector, and the population shares in each sector. So that although inequality may rise as a result of the movement between sectors, uh, in fact, Kuznets pointed that out, uh, it may also be balanced by what happens within the sector and the shares of each sector overall. And there's been some various uh, attempts to look at developing theory uh, from a, very, a number of writers writing in that kind of tradition. So for us, we were thinking principally about these issues of economic development, relinking employment and inequality to economic development, a structural transformation. And what we were interested in was how the sectoral composition of employment or changes in it affects inequality. And principally because the case study is around Indonesia in a period of, of history in, in Indonesia where Indonesia was deindustrializing, or at least reached manufacturing peaks, uh, the impact of deindustrialization on employment in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, whether it increases or reduces inequality. I will hand over to Arif next. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me go. Now, why Indonesia? So many reasons. Uh, my other is Indonesia in, in the past, particularly in the 1980s, has been generating rapid employment growth through the industrialization. industrialization. However, that's quite halted in the decade of 2000s. And then, uh, coincidentally, during the same time, uh, during the 2000s, Indonesia has been rising unprecedented increase in inequality. And for the purpose of this paper, actually, uh, we use Indonesian district for, for several reasons. For example, uh, one of them is the commonality, uh, because uh, district represents a broader range of uh, social landscape and also share so many characteristics unlike uh, cross-country studies. Uh, and not, and that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is because we have access to the data. Uh, <laughs> And then also, uh, actually, we found that income and inequality range of Indonesian districts uh, represent quite a good range of, of cross-country data. So uh, data too, as we, we, we all see here, for example, that uh, the, the 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 triangle that represents the 390 districts that we have, and then we overlay the data with uh, cross-country data, and then you can find Indonesian district, which which is actually. Uh, similar to such Saharan African country, but actually Jakarta city is equivalent to Spain and Italy in terms of uh, income inequality, oh, sorry, in terms of income <coughs> per capita. And then we have also quite good range of inequality. So this 15 years of 390 district uh, is quite uh, interesting to, 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 to dig down or to deeper into a better analysis. So basically what we did is <coughs> we estimate uh, the panel data models uh, 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 trying to explain uh, the, the uh, factor that determine inequality, various kind. Uh, our main uh, indicator is Gini, but we also check other measures. Uh, and then controlling other factor, we also introduce the, quad the quadratic term in term in in the sh uh, oh, sorry the share of employment by sectors. And then, as well as the, the, the quadratic term, so we want to test as well the linearity, directly testing uh, the Kuznet curve. Uh, and we, we we assemble, we managed to assemble a data set containing uh, 390 districts for 15 years. Uh, from for also we add, so from that data we can get uh, employment share as well, other than inequality and various indicator as well as we combine it with other data of value added uh, from other sources. And this is just to give you a look of uh, the data when you uh, uh, scatter plot the income, mean income of the district and inequality, then you can see uh, how it's related. And then to give you also an idea of how we group the sectors, uh, so this is the sectors that we group. Uh, we divide into 
five and five plus sectors uh, for reason that I will tell you again later but we divide into agricultures and then industry we divide into manufacturing and non-manufacturing we divide market into two mar uh, services into two market and non-market services uh, and in the five plus uh, aggregations uh, we separate uh, finance and insurance and business related sectors and also, if you want to, if if you are interested, as well, I also plot the, the 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 trend over 2000, how it looks like. As you can see that uh, the agriculture decline, uh, however, the manufacturing in the decade 2000 sta uh, stabilized. So, and then it seems that the non-agriculture employment moved from uh, agriculture sector to uh, non-market services. <coughs> and then this is just to give a give you a overview about the casual, casual observations. Uh, so you can see that it's, 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 it's obvious, for example, that uh, when people move from agriculture, then inequality rise here. But to, to which sectors uh, that labor move, actually it's correlations between inequality and those share, uh, even though seemingly to be more positive than negative, but it varies. So what we did is we used this fixed effect regressions, and then uh, we found actually uh, that uh, if we use only non-agriculture, this non-agriculture though is uh, positive and significant. So it, it means that the more you move to non-agriculture sector, the employment share, the the, the rise, the, the the higher the inequality. But when you disentangle, disaggregate these non-agricultures, then you can see here that, for example, all industries, apparently in inconsistent with Kunal uh, finding, for in the recent case, that the industry, both non-manufacturer and manufacturer, actually has quadratic, uh, has a non-linear increase. So it's increase in inequality, however, with the turning point. <coughs> So it's a kind of Kuznet uh, way, a Kuznet point of view. And however, in services, uh, the the non-market services behave like Kuznet. However, the market services not really. So that's why I uh, I disaggregate again that market services into fire services, fire when financial insurance and so on, and then here. So then for the finance and business sector, we again find the, uh, the quadratic uh, term. So that's what we found. Uh, it is interesting to, to note that Indonesia actually here, more or less to be non-market non services, yeah? non-market services, moving, uh, if you see this picture, this is non-market services, where the action is here. Uh, so, so this is the highlight, but let's let's. It also depends on the turning point. So we found that actually the turning point, even if it's statistically significant, actually is is high. It's quite high turning point. So for example, uh, in Indonesia, uh, the proportion of those district below the turning uh, below the turning point is very high. So most most district actually below the turning point. So still far away. And if we compare to cross country, so they are still high too, but not as high as if you are using in districts. So it means 88% of country in the GGDC database actually fall below the turning point. Uh, in the case of Indonesia, let me not you, uh, give you a small some remark, because Indonesia, in the last one and a half decade, the movement is from agriculture and non-market services. Here, you can see. So. When, when, when you look at the result, and it will it imply that uh, that movement that happened in Indonesia during the decade of 2000 will will tend to increase in inequality. Uh, so, 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 from this point, then uh, we will review that, of course, uh, whether or not the industrialization increase or reduce inequality, it depends on what is the initial positions of that shares, uh, for example, here or here, uh, and the directions of the, ch of, of, the, of the chain. So that, that matters, so it's, 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 it's not general. So it really depends on spe country, country specific factors, 
country specific initial positions. Uh, also, we add just to test, we also add value added shares instead of employment shares. Actually, we found that value added shares in GDP does not have any strong uh, correlations yeah, uh, between them and, and inequality, unlike labor shares. And uh, the reason we argue that, well, value added shares and employment share is actually correlated, but actually weakly, particularly when we look into district data. Because district data is, a, I mean, the, the, the mobility of input, it particularly capital within districts, I think that makes spillover effect of, uh, of uh, return to factor, for example. So what happening, the economic activity that happened in certain district is not necessarily translate into uh, welfare of the citizens of the district because of this free mobility of input. So, so it's, we have to be careful in, in, in using this in value added data in, 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 in the districts. You may argue differently in the case of cross countries. So we also uh, do robustness checks. So we use 10 different economic quality measures because we, have use, we are using micro data to do this. Uh, and then the result is quite robust to, to those uh, variations. And then we also use different kind of specification. And then also we change sample variation and more or less uh, the result quite robust. So let me conclude. So Andy at the beginning asked questions and then ourselves and we also try to answer. So, so how does the sectoral composition of employment or change in it affect inequality? Well, uh, we, we have three uh, points of answering this. Inequality rise when the employment share of industry rise. That's what we found with our data. However, inequality rise when the employment share of some services with high turning point. So it has high turning point. So with, with, with service as well, rise, inequality rise, but high turning point, even though some services may have a little bit lower turning point. So uh, in, in our view, this, 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 this uh, finding somewhat support uh, Kuznet hypothesis. Uh, our note on whether or how in the, the industrialization of employment yeah, increases or reduce inequality. So again, I, we, we will give that it depends on the initial positions of the employment share within each country, sectoral share within each country, and the, the direction toward where they are moving. But let me, uh, let us uh, give some, uh, what is it, Pro not projection, but uh, view about, about, about the current uh, global situation. So, uh, so uh, we found that uh, if, if, if agricultural employment share is generally declining, declining, and I think it happened in most countries, so, so if we combine that with the predictions that the industry and service employment share of most developing countries are below the turning point, for example, the GDC country, 88% are below the turning point, so it is less likely that the industrialization will reduce inequality. So it will either uh, doesn't have any effect or rise inequality, like, for example, what happened in Indonesia. So that's the end of our presentation. Thank you.